Nicki Minaj and uh, Lady Gaga all waited tables long back and I did it too. So do you think that could be the secret of uh, getting successful? No. I'm just kidding, okay? I am Smita Gondkar and I'm here not to talk about my achievements but I'm here to talk about my journey, my experiences, how I started trusting existence and the impact it had on my life. Right from my childhood, since school days, I was an aggressive sportsman. And later on, I started riding motorcycles. But I always wanted to do motorsports like my elder brother did. But my dad, he never allowed me to do it. So I had to wrap up these desires and put it on the side. And like many other girls my age at that point of time, I wanted to act in films. I wanted to watch myself on that big screen. But in those days again, it was not a very um, a profession that could be taken very seriously. And that's the reason I had to pack this all up and put it on the side again. Girls in our family back then used to usually get married after a few years of getting out of college. So I decided to take hotel management. And while I was still deciding what to do in those three, four years, I came across a brochure. This brochure was of this beautiful, luxurious, huge cruise ship. And I learned that uh, they hired girls on board. And since then, I decided that I want to work on this ship. And that was my only ambition. And now I had to do everything to finish, to get on that ship right out of college because I thought that my parents, I mean I rather feared that my parents would get me married in a few years. So I started working really hard. I took up extra languages, extra courses, ex extra classes just to add up to my qualification. But the most difficult task was to convince my family. I came from a joint family. I was the only daughter, the only girl child and the youngest of all. Nobody had taken up a job, that too in America. So convincing them was a real big task. But I managed to convince them eventually and then they decided to help me pursue my dream. I finally got a placement with Disney Cruise Line. But I had to wait for six months. So while I was waiting, I came across a course which was a natural healing therapy course of 21 days. And out of curiosity and out of chalo kuch kar lete, out of keeping myself occupied rather, I took up this course. And to my surprise, I realized it was an intensive form of meditation. And healing was its byproduct. I went through such heavy detox of mind, body and soul that I started changing into a different person, a better human being. While all this was happening, I fell in tune with the universe. Love, respect, gratitude towards existence started flowing in. A great sense of understanding towards every situation in your life started seeping in. I got into this beautiful relationship with existence. And once you start trusting it, your fears start fading away. We all have fears. Fears of the future, fear of the unknown, creating a lot of insecurities. Many people either keep thinking about their past or they're worrying about the future. How are we going to give 100% to our present if we are doing that? The moment you start giving your 100% in your present, it's going to turn out much more beautiful. You're going to achieve much more better. And the future automatically is going to be better. So I started living in my present. So finally I get this call from the ship that I'm supposed to get on board. And that's when I realize that my desire to go on the ship had gone. My ambitions had gone. The fashion icon that I was, was gone. And the competitiveness in my sports and other fields, gone. 
I had changed to a very different kind of a person. I was very happy, in a very blissful state of mind, and very content. And all that hard work that I took, all that, all the classes, courses for those two years that I did to get this job, poof, gone. And I didn't want to go on that ship anymore. My family, especially my mom, she was really worried. She was like, she was worried seeing her daughter take a Vairagya lifestyle. So she convinced me that why don't I take up the same inner engineering after I have experienced what this beautiful life has to offer. Look like now she wanted me to go on that ship more than I did. So I said, so in this battle, I to go, in this battle whether to go or not to go, I decided to follow the universe's purpose for me and I boarded the ship. At first, it was very difficult, I'm telling you. And I'm sure your first job, it will always be difficult. It's difficult for everybody. It was so much difficult that I wanted to leave everything and I wanted to run back home. But I remember one day I was walking down the deck. I could see the ocean and I could see the horizon on all sides. It was a beautiful sight, but it was scary too. I could see no land and the ship was sailing alone and not a single ship in this entire horizon. And it is scary, but what we used to have on, uh, on the cruise was, we used to have various, of course, various kinds of uh, weather conditions. Sometimes the sea would be very calm, sometimes it would be very rough and windy too. So much so that the water would splash up to deck three. But the ship, it would always keep moving forward. The ship and the sea taught me a lot. It taught me to, it gave me the courage and taught me to keep moving forward in spite of any obstacles. And now I started changing myself again. I could see that I'm turning into a materialistic and a more competitive person. So I was changing again and trust me, it was not easy. And in this journey of five contracts from waiting tables to being a wine connoisseur and then to being an officer on board, I realized that I'd become more confident, more successful, and ambitious. Surprisingly, the hidden desires that I was talking to you about, they started manifesting. Acting, that was manifesting. We've heard of this very famous author called Paolo Coelho and he had once quoted, when a person really desires something from his bottom of his heart, the entire universe conspires to help him realize his dream. And the same thing was happening to me. So I started up with modeling and then started doing some ad films. Later took up theater, worked in a lot of films with different, of different genres, did uh, some very popular music videos and also worked in some reality shows. When you do something new or learn something new, you have to work on your craft. And when you learn on your craft or do this with totality and total awareness, the process of learning becomes much more quicker and you achieve greater heights. But that was not it. You have to also have a lot of discipline, dedication, persistence and work very hard for it. I did the same and this journey led me in winning various Best Actress Awards in national and international film festival. While I was doing all this, uh, my some other dreams started manifesting. We spoke about motorsports. So I managed to do, uh, I managed to rally bikes. Then uh, I did uh, off-road 4x4 circuit, I'm uh, sorry, off-road circuit car racing, Formula 4 racing. And while I was at a bike rally, the rally of the Himalayas, it reminded me 
of the ship and the sea. We had obstacles like freezing temperature, high altitude, lack of oxygen, black ice, stones, rocks, gravel, sand, river beds, river crossing, and not a sight of single human for long, long stretches. And to top it all, I fell a few times. I had no option but to get up, get back on that bike, and keep moving forward. And this is how life is, isn't it? I also had an opportunity to work uh, or be a part of a couple of reality shows. One was Stuntmania, which was a bike stunt, stunt riding uh, related reality show. And one was Apollo Flight of the Hawk, which was an off-road 4x4 adventure series. Both these shows had a lot of thrill, adventure and risk. They played with our mind. They wanted to introduce some fear. They would get elements like fire, or height, or the ocean, or the bats, and would create a fear. And one of the reasons that I could perform well in these stunts and these tasks was because I had overcome my fears. Initially on these shows, I was looked down as a contestant. Firstly, because I'm a girl. Secondly, because I'm an actress who they thought that probably I'm not used to the rough conditions that these shows had to offer. But a dark horse on every show, I proved them wrong with my actions. And have you noticed, these are two contrast things that I do. I'm an actress, where I get completely pampered on the sets with all the comforts. And the second one, where I race in very tough conditions outside my comfort zone. To achieve something, it is very important to step outside your comfort zone. I do that once in a while, and as you see, I'm doing it here today. And the moment you start doing this, you will realize that it will be very easy to adapt to any situation in your life. Have you guys heard about Big Boss? I'm sure you might have, yes. So there's a show called Big Boss, which is also known as Big Brother in other countries. It's a reality show where they put 16 contestants together and uh, uh, with cameras and they are not allowed to use any cell phones and no contact with the outside world. It is a mind game. And uh, to, you know, to plan strategies with 16 different minded people Bitching, gossiping, fighting, these things come very naturally. But trust me guys, I did not do any of that. <coughs> Firstly because I had much more balanced mind and I played with dignity. And I was also appreciated for it. I also remember on the weekends we could interact with our host. And the contestants would pull up some fight or uh, some argument which probably happened like a week back or a few days back and as an audience they would ask my comment or my take on it and trust me guys I used to take time and I was like oh my god what was that okay who said what because I was living in the present I didn't want to carry the negativity many people also asked me how come you uh, were so nice to all the contestants all throughout your journey of 100 days I mean, especially to those who were misbehaving with me at that point of time throughout. And my answer to them is, I believe in my own karmas, my own actions. I will forgive, forget, and move on. But in a task, I would stand strong and fight back. Always remember that if you ever meet a person after many years, you will not remember the exact words of the conversation that you had but you will always remember how that person made you feel. So while I was in this show, with every up and down, with every task and every nomination, I think it's very close to a story that I heard when I was little. And I'm very sure you guys heard it too. There was one king and one minister. The minister had a habit of saying, whatever happens, happens for the best. So one day the king cut his finger and he started bleeding. The king was in tremendous pain 
and the minister said, whatever happens, happens for the best. Now the king is really angry on this minister and he puts him up in the prison. Later, he goes out hunting in the forest. He loses his way and he's really tired, so he decides to rest under a tree. And while he's resting under a tree, he sees a lion walk up to him. This, he, the king is really scared and he decides to stay still and act dead. The lion walks up to him, sips him for a little bit and he walks away. When the king returns back to the kingdom and asks, calls his wise men and asks him, why did the lion not attack him? And that's when he realizes, he learns that the lion will never attack somebody who's already hurt or bleeding. He remembers the minister's words. He calls the minister, apologizes to him and he realizes that the cut finger has saved his life. So, when the minister comes and he asks the minister, uh, what is it, what has this prison done good to you? And that's when the minister says, had I not been in the prison, I would have been with you in the forest and the lion would have certainly killed me. So, whatever happens, happens for the best. This is how, nothing but trusting existence actually. And this is how the audience, my lovely audience, kept me in that house for all hundred days. And I would like to take an opportunity to thank my audience for appreciating or and realizing and appreciating my qualities and showering me with so much love. There is a very important thing I would like to share today. There is nobody in this world who has a perfect life. We all go through our ups and downs. And but especially during your lows, uh, what what happens is your past experience will always help you and give you courage to go through your lows. I went through my share of lows and what gave me courage was my experience of the success that I tasted at my first job in America. Initially there's a lot of pain, hurt, resentment, uh, you have fear for future, a lot of insecurity, don't know what to do. But that's when you have to work on yourself to get a balanced mind. And most of these achievements today, whatever I have achieved, have all come in after having a balanced mind and a lot of love towards the universe and towards life.